Iran is threatening uh, U.S. warships, as I understand it, Leland. Tell us about that. How serious is this? Un porte-avions américain localisé près du détroit d'Ormuz, dans une zone utilisée par la marine iranienne dans le cadre. There seems to be some serious observation going on in the southern hemisphere and leaks coming out all over the place. Uh, it does appear that groups of military and professional astronomers are openly uh, uh, active, let's say, at the Wormwood location in Australia. Well, of course, uh, that's what I've been saying all along. The indicators were all there. And uh, now there are reports that a mini solar system is coming into ours. Basically, you are on your own. Be prepared. Uh, that's the best thing I can tell you. And as far as... Well, I would suggest that, number one, you need clean water, number two, you need your own supply of food, and number three, you need some basic first aid equipment, number four, you need some health maintenance natural products. And my own use on this, I use essential oils, Years, as I've advised people through this era of 
awaiting a extrasolar system object. And by the way, there are many of them. There is not just one. Uh, this is what scientists are starting to find out. And of course, they're not telling the public. And it does appear, uh, I've been saying this all along, uh, it, it now appears that there are leaks, <coughs> excuse me, coming out of um, the southern hemisphere of the number of astronomers down there looking at what they are calling a mini solar system moving into ours. This is what apparently Harrington saw back in the early 90s and in the forefront was of course Hale-Bopp, but the uh, comet nucleus that eventually became Hale-Bopp, somewhat of a mini solar system in its own right but certainly much smaller than the much bigger object coming in behind it. And uh, this would be coming in from the Southern Hemisphere. The, the point is, forget about dates. As I said last week and the week before, don't worry about dates. Don't worry about internet chatter. Don't think you're going to all of a sudden wake up some day and hear on the evening news that, gee, uh, big object is coming in and here's the day that's going to be here folks that is not going to happen that's not going to happen uh, on the evening news our space scholars are being completely diverted into uh, little private very exclusive space programs of the elite they're not going to share it with you they're not going to share their cave systems with you the, the question that comes out of this, and which is imperative right now, understanding that we are in a time of celestial change in the solar system, a time of uh, when upheaval and uh, severe change, not just average change, but severe change with our sun, with our weather, with uh, the local solar environment of Earth and the other planets, is uh, potentially going to change radically. How can the people in power, supposedly, that are in the positions of uh, federal, state, and in many cases, local government, how can they possibly even cope with this when there has been absolutely no planning done for the general public? And the crisis that they propose to prevent by not telling the public is actually going to be a hundred times worse once the public gets the drift of what's going on. Uh, the cities, the destruction and the, the looting, the, the just the complete destruction of our cities is going to happen internally. You wouldn't have to bring an army in here because the cities will self-destruct on their own. People have not been taught a little thing called personal responsibility, how to take care of yourself and your neighbor and make the best out of a bad situation. Everybody has everything handed to them, everything is easy, you simply go to the mall with your credit card and everything's taken care of. Uh, when all of that changes, I call it the 95% rule, 95% of the public is going to wake up one day with nothing and the real survivors are going to find a way to deal with all of these situations and it's not going to be it won't take long it's not going to be pretty but when these major events happen uh, it, it's going to happen very quickly one thing we found out from Comet Bradfield is that these objects of course, NASA sees them coming from a long time out, from a long distance away. But the public is going to have a week or two or three notice, is my prediction. And uh, that's all, because uh, we're, we're just, we don't have the ability to get to the locations to observe what they are observing and not telling us about. It's a very difficult thing. I've personally tried it myself. And uh, really, once again, 
especially in the time frame we're in right now, the May time frame in June. Uh, these, of course, are the times that Harrington said were the observing times for those uh, southern locations. So isn't it interesting that in the month of May and June, Australia has all of a sudden become extremely active with astronomers and military types hanging around the uh, Project Wormwood facility in Australia. Now, I'm running out of time here, so I just want to recap what we might see as people on Earth. We may see large numbers of comets. We may see other planets capturing comets. We may see uh, new moons evolving around other planets. We may see planets encountering medium or small or large comets with devastating results. We may see comets coming close to Earth with devastating results. Uh, we may be hit by meteors or uh, uh, many more meteors than we do and of course this has been happening already. Uh, in the past year, many, many bolide type objects coming in and striking Earth. At any rate, I'm out of time here. Uh, the things that we would expect are happening. They're coming in from the south. I don't have a time frame. I do not put time frames on these type of events unless I have sound data and I'm working on getting sound data. That's all I have to say this week. Be prepared. Good night. This is Jim McCanny. This is my science hour and we are definitely at the crossroads. Good night. <laughs>